Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning into today's webinar, 10 free resources for teaching health science concepts online. My name is Emily Klinsky. I am on the marketing team here at RealityWorks. I will be behind the scenes assisting our lead presenter today, Denise Dubois. Denise is one of our product managers here at RealityWorks and has been with us for a little over 10 years. She is a frequent presenter, trainer, and blogger, all things related to Real Care Baby and other related products. She has over 20 years of education, marketing, product design, and curriculum writing experience. Before we get started, I do want to cover a couple things. First, today's presentation is being recorded and everybody will receive a link to the recording as well as the handout um, with the links and the PowerPoint slide presentation. Um, you should see that in your email within 24 hours after the webinar. We also will be having a Q&A session at the end. If you do have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A or chat feature at the bottom, and we will answer as many of those um, as we can at the end. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Denise <clears throat> to get us going. Thank you, Emily, and welcome everyone to today's webinar on free resources for teaching health science concepts online. We know that right now we're living in some very, very different times than a few months ago, and many of you have been challenged to deliver that content online to students. So we know that CT, you know, at its very core is hands-on learning. However, when students are required to learn remotely at home or online, the hands-on learning is difficult, and we know that in some cases impossible to replicate. But we're just hoping today to share a few quick ideas that could be used to help you know, extend your teaching of some of those technical health science skills, as well as a few soft skills. So before we begin with our first um, lesson plans and ideas, I wanted to share this access site with you. And as a company, we've made all of our curricula and product guides for health science available as free resources uh, for every product that we have. So you know, to get a curricula on a specific skill or topic, all you would need to do is go to this link and click on a trainer or a mannequin that teaches that. And that's where you'll find all of the lesson plans, the slides, the instructions and assessments. And uh, many of the things um, we're sharing today can be accessed via this link. Um, but we wanted to make sure that you knew about that up front. And one thing I'd like to do is stop now and just have you find a piece of paper if you can and number one through five. And throughout this presentation, um, as you see ideas that you like, we'd encourage you to write down the strategy, the activity, the link or idea so that you can uh, refer to it later on and use it in your program. Um, there will be many more than uh, 10 ideas uh, shared today, but um, if you can just identify five at the end of the presentation, we think you'll be able to easily narrow it down to your top three and try those immediately in your program. So with that, let's begin. Uh, number one, uh, some suggested free phlebotomy content uh, ideas that you might find useful. First of all, we all are leaning heavily right now on, vi on videos, and phlebotomy is an area that uh, certainly could uh, take advantage of that as well. Um, there are many phlebotomy procedural videos out there um, on YouTube. The one here that I've um, also got uh, highlighted, um, the link there is an anatomical tutorial all about veins. And that again will give your students that background knowledge to prepare them to do some of the phlebotomy procedures later on when you can be in person. We have also found that sometimes uh, using things like a free phlebotomy apps that are available, such as the one that you see on the screen, they also have some helpful teaching information uh, at times. So it's just trying to get ourselves to, you know, think a little bit um, differently and, and use some of the tools that uh, may be available to our students while they're not um, able to be in class. Now here are some other ideas um, that you could think about. First of all, if you're looking for phlebotomy simulation providers, uh, there's one that I found that popped up when I started to look, and they offer a free uh, one-week trial. And their individual module price isn't even too, too high. I think it was $9.50 per module, even if students um, themselves would wish to find more resources to learn in addition to some of the content that, that you're teaching in your class. So that Simtex was just one that I found that had that a phlebotomy module um, online that you might want to look at. And then another one was a, a free app out there um, called the Mega Blood Draw Simulator. Now, we can't speak to the effectiveness of these things necessarily, but we thought uh, we're just going to try to throw a lot of ideas out there to you. You can check them out and be, uh, be the, the one to decide if you think they're, they've got some potential or not. Now, uh, number two is IV insertion skills. And again, videos that show that procedure, there are many good ones out there on YouTube. 
um, that you could that you could uh, consider to show your students. And I also did find one that showed how students could use a banana to practice on a procedure at home. Now. Um, that may or may not be something you'd like to do, but could you could you package up the rest of the materials needed so that students could practice these types of skills at home? It's just a thought. Um, so at the link that I provided there, that was one kit idea that um, one instructor uh, shared out there that I thought I would pass along, um, a way to come up with a student kit for at-home practice. Now here are some ideas and resources for teaching something like a patient bed bathing lesson. Now this one um, in the first link uses a mannequin like you, and like you would do if you were demonstrating in class. Now, if you don't wish to use um, someone else's video, you could actually create your own bathing video by taking, taping yourself or videoing yourself and demonstrating with your own mannequins that you may have uh, uh, access to. Um, as an instructor. Now, additional content on teaching assisting with a shower could be helpful. So I did find a video on that. Now, practice um, also on the people that your students have access to at home can work very well. However, if you're practicing at home, um, only uh, do, the, do those areas that you feel comfortable with. Maybe you do a partial bed bath and things like that, but really um, have students take a look at just you know, what they have available, who they have um, availability to for potential areas of practice. Number four is a mobilization and splinting practice. Um, now, in many places, you can find procedures and you could save them and share them with students for students to access so they can start to begin to learn the proper procedures um, and steps in the right order. Um, in the link that I shared with you at the beginning of the webinar, um, all of our health science lessons that teach um, nursing and health science skills do inc include a skills checkoff of procedures. So if you're looking for another uh, free source of that, you could, you could go um, to that link as well. Um, also, you could have them view videos that can show them how to do these types of uh, splinting and immobilization techniques. And here's a short one that I found specific to long bone immobilization, but there are many, many more out there that uh, you could also use in your, in your uh, course. Now, um, here's some ideas for immobilization and splitting uh, that can be practiced at home using family or friends. Um, there are articles um, on here, or the, the um, components that um, I have shared on the screen here are suggested materials that could be used for practice at home. So, and here's a, a, a link for a suggested kit for splinting a broken arm. So you could have your students gather the materials and then practice following procedures that they've either seen on videos or read about in a lesson or from a slide presentation that you've shared. Uh, they could take a photo, they could submit that to you, um, showing them doing the mobilization or splinting. Now we know that this is not ideal, of course, but it does provide some hands-on practice for these types of skills. Number five, thinking about intubation. Um, you know, we know that video is always an effective tool and it helps students visualize uh, things like endotracheal intubation. Now there are many short video animations available out there that could help your students understand what to do. And here are just three that I'm sharing with you today. They're, they're relatively short, but all of them I thought had some, some great visuals. So these are just a few you could consider. Um, you may want to have students you know, watch all of them because they're relatively short and they have those different viewpoints. Um, please also know you don't have to be madly writing down all these links. We will be um, sharing all of the, the links from the um, program with you in a post webinar email today as well. So one activity you could do is to take procedures for intubation, um, put them into a Word doc, and you could scramble the order. Then you could challenge students to put them in the correct procedural order. Now, if you were working with Google Docs, you could set this up so that each step has a correct number associated with it. So if students did it, it could auto uh, correct or auto grade. And um, also in the, uh, lay at the link that I shared at the beginning of the webinar, um, we do have an intubation curriculum that has the procedurals um, and checkoff sheets available to you if you'd like to use those. So again, we know hands-on practice is really needed to be done as, you know, for a skill like this in a skills lab, but we're just trying to help students get all the information that they can and be as ready as possible so it can save time when you really are back in person. So let's think a little bit about blood pressure practice. 
Well, on site, we know students can use simulators to practice on blood pressure or take them on each other. However, since that may not be available now in a remote uh, learning environment, um, how can we have our students practice independently? What are some ways we could potentially make that happen? Well, do you have blood pressure simulators in your program that could be checked out potentially to students to practice with? Or do you have blood pressure cuffs that you could use possibly to create a blood pressure lab kit that could be checked out by students if possible? Uh, students could then use it you know, on family members and so on to practice. Um, you know, if, you, if students are really motivated, um, you can find uh, blood pressure cuffs and things like that on Amazon for $20 or under if they really wanted to, to purchase their own to do something like that. Um, there are also things online that can help. And I found an online self-test that included some audio files as well as uh, knowledge questions uh, with an answer key. And that's at that first link that's available. I also found um, some online auto recordings of Kortikoff sounds students could listen to and that could help them if they're listening with the headphones uh, to isolate those, those different sounds um, as they're taking the blood pressure. So all of those kind of things, you could embed those links and provide them on an LMS system or in Google Classroom very, very easily for students to access. So number seven, bandaging videos, especially if you have an EMT program. Uh, again, there are many, many videos that specifically address bandaging for EMTs. And I've chosen just a couple here that I thought were, were pretty good. Now, if your students are able to access bandages at home, they could practice, again, on family members or friends, or perhaps you have enough uh, bandaging uh, supplies, you could prepare bandaging practice kits and allow students to check those out to practice some of these procedures at home. So they could watch the video. Uh, you, you might be able to do some, some online teaching and then provide those kits and then have them do some at home practice. Um, here are a few more videos that show specific dressing changes and wound care in action that could also help provide visual information on those topics. And I've just got three here, the dry sterile dressing, uh, changing a wound dressing, and then caring for a wound with a drain. Um, there may not be anything at home that they could simulate necessarily that kind of care, but again, if we can give them that background information um, ahead of time, uh, that's very helpful so, to save time when they're back in person someday. Shock management. Um, if you have an EMT program, the first resource um, on this list here is a website for EMT students that is really full of a lot of information about things like shock management, including uh, two, video two videos, um, they have illustrations, and they also have a self quiz. So lots and lots of information there. And then the second uh, bullet is um, a bleeding or shock management uh, a short video. And it focuses on preparing EMT students for passing the skill, that portion of the skills test. And then um, that skill, of course, needs uh, practice at some point for training. But uh, certainly, these could be the types of resources that you might find useful um, in, a, in a remote learning environment. So ostomy care. Um, first of all, here's an ostomy care video that shows an instructor talking through a skills lab demo. Now, if you're not comfortable wanting to do show someone else's demo, if you have an ostomy care mannequin, you could create one of your own uh, using it in a similar fashion, and then you could share it with your students. Um, and now, if you um, search on app stores, I actually found several different ostomy care apps that were available to download for free. And that alone may provide your students with some more additional information that, that's useful. Another thing to think about and tap into is the resources that can be found on some organizations and associations um, out there on specific um, medical areas. Though so there is a United Ostomy Associations of America, and they've got lots of information. You may find that also for things like phlebotomy or um, whatever the area is. Uh, do a keyword search under that area and then organization or association, and you might really be surprised what you find. Um, ECG practice. Uh, if you're working with students teaching ECG skills, you can practice your own training video, um, or you can practice your own uh, or prepare your own training video on things like lead placement and also rhythm identification. Now, at the link that I provided earlier, um, we have an ECG curriculum, and you do have access to that, and that includes some information, PowerPoints, and lesson on both the concepts of lead placement and rhythm identification. 
Um, there are also some other online sources. Um, I did find one on there that I thought was, was particularly helpful for lead placement. And you can see the link that I've got there um, for the primemedicaltraining.com video. Um, also, here are two online ECG quiz sources that I thought were helpful, um, but there are many, many more than just this. So um, feel free to also uh, look some of those up yourself. But if you're looking to save time, you might wanna check these out. Um, you can see how students could uh, easily use something like this if they have internet access um, at home to practice these types of skills of recognizing uh, the rhythm patterns and, and so forth. So uh, I thought these two were definitely worth a mention today for ECG skills. Now let's discuss a few ideas for teaching uh, concepts uh, like empathy using wearable simulation experiences. Uh, first of all, uh, this is one that uh, is a do-it-yourself arthritis simulation idea for at-home use. Um, this simulation activity was adapted from our geriatric simulation suit curriculum and also our arthritis simulation curriculum. Now, because students would not have those simulators at home, in, in this I idea is to have students use commonly found objects in the home to create the arthritis simulation experience. So you would have your students access the following items that you see there on the screen, if possible. Um, you would also want to have your students access a debrief chart like the one you see on the screen. Now that's the one that's in our curriculum, but you could of course easily create your own in a table if you'd like. Um, you could make that available through your LMS system. You could email it, make it available in Google Docs. But um, students would document their simulation experience using that chart. Um, again, remember, you do have access to this, this very one if you'd like. Now, what they would do is for the simulation, um, you'd need to share um, some information um, with your students before they do it. So the, in this experience, they'd have three different simulation activities that they would do. So for the first one, you would explain that they're going to be feeling what it's like to have arthritic hands. So you'd have each student get transparent tape or duct tape, and your students would uh, tape the thumb and index finger together of the non-dominant hand, and then tape the three other joints of their dominant hand together. Now, if tape isn't available, you can even use something like rubber bands, but this will restrict the movement and fine motor skills, simulating stiffness due to arthritis. Now, students would then record the impact of their, on their movement, how they felt, and how they would, uh, this would affect their daily life. So you could try the activities like cutting with the scissors, writing their name with a pen, opening a childproof bottle, or even twisting a, a cap off of a bottle, um, drinking from a glass, or picking up and counting change. The second activity then, you would say, you know, hands also uh, may experience a loss of sensation associated with aging. So they're now going to experience what that's like. So you would have them put a pair of gloves on. They could be thin disposable gloves or even light winter gloves. And then you'd have them try a similar activity where, the, again, you'd have them um, with the gloves on, you'd try to cut with the scissors, write, open something, maybe drink from a glass, open or close an envelope, things like that. Um, and then the next thing you would do is fill those gloves with unpopped popcorn kernels. That will further dull the finger's ability to also and to feel and will also simulate um, somewhat uncomfortable and painful arthritis. And then have them perform those same activities yet again. And then the third thing you would want to do is tell them, explain to them that they're going to walk a mile in an aging person's shoes today in order to understand and empathize with what geriatric patients experience um, when they lose the fatty pads that cushion the feet and the skin becomes thinner on their feet. So in that case, you would uh, find things like peas, uh, I mean dried peas or popcorn, uh, even gravel, uh, small pieces. Half students put several pieces of that into the sole of a shoe or a sock and then put a shoe on. And this will simulate the pain associated with age-related loss of those fatty pads. Have them walk a short distance around the room. Um, and this will um, simulate that uh, poor circulation pain, a neuropathy and arthritis. Um, so have them be creative and do those things and they'll start to understand what it's like if they're working with a patient that has that type of, of condition. So here's another activity that they can do at home to simulate hearing loss. Now, the purpose of this activity is to have students experience age-related hearing loss. We think that students will definitely have a greater sensitivity and empathy for the impact that hearing loss can have on daily life of adults. 
So you'd have your students gather as many of those uh, materials as possible that you see. Um, things like cotton balls, earplugs, noise canceling headphones. And then um, we have something called the hearing loss reflection handout in our curriculum. Or again, you could create your own, um, but it's all the, the debrief questions asking um, how it felt and so forth as they go through the simulation. You could post this online or make it available on your LMS. And then they would answer those questions again as they go through the activities and turn it back into you. So they could use things like those, you know, the cotton balls, the earplugs or even noise canceling headphones and do some of the following types of activities. Uh, you could play music, um, you could talk to another person or have someone give them instructions and see if they can hear. You could have your students talk to someone on a cell phone or even play background uh, music and then trying to talk to someone. So those are all really, really good things to try. Another thing you could simulate is tinnitus, you know, that annoying ringing in the ears. Um, that can be simulated, simulated by playing a sustained high pitch noise of some sort. We also did find a tinnitus uh, simulation video that was available on YouTube and I've included the link here. It's not real long, it's about three minutes. Um, this one plays 10 different uh, tinnitus tones, but um, hearing loss over time could definitely be simulated by also gradually turning down the volume on a device using music or the sound of voices. And I've got some additional um, videos here that you can uh, consider. Um, there are loads of hearing loss simulation videos available and um, they're relatively short. Um, all of the ones here on the screen take your students um, uh, through uh, normal hearing all the way through to profound hearing loss within the one minute simulation. And they're short but extremely powerful. And these links can be embedded in, in your lessons um, and made easily available for students to experience. So here's a visual impairment do-it-yourself simulation you could consider. Um, one way your students could experience a visual impairment simulation experience at home or remotely is to look for these types of common objects if possible. So um, you've got uh, cheap glasses, sunglasses, uh, glasses with the wrong prescription, uh, sleeping masks, but, um, or you could find some of your own and maybe create those uh, take-home kits um, to send home with students, but here's what you would have them do. They, you could have them wear glasses smeared with soap or Vaseline, which would simulate cataracts. You could have them cut out a, a dark dot and put it in the middle of a pair of glasses to simulate macular degeneration. You could have them wear glasses made with the wrong prescription or sunglasses indoors to simulate things like glaucoma. You could use sleep masks for total blindness or in a bind, simply have your students close their eyes. Another thing you could do uh, is create a set and send them out with students. So you could take clear safety glasses and you could buy window cling material on Amazon in a dark color. You could cut a hole out of the middle of, of one and put it on for glaucoma, or you could put a dark circle in the middle of the glasses for macular degeneration. So there are definitely some easy do-it-yourself ways to create visual impairment. Now we know that um, when you're teaching in an online situation, students won't have um, the visual simulation glasses um, like from Reality Works for home use. So if you have them prepare those do-it-yourself glasses for as many conditions as possible, um, that would help uh, their experience quite a bit. They could even research each condition. Um, they could create their own from their own research results if they wanted to. Uh, you could give your students access to what we call the visual impairment simulation experience sheet. It's a handout that's in our curriculum. Um, you could, um, you'll have access to it after the webinar today if you'd like to use it, or of course you can always create your own. But the purpose of the activity is to have your students experience common age-related visual impairments. Um, again, we believe greater sensitivity and empathy uh, will be generated um, and they'll understand that just the impact that can have on the daily life of older adults. So using some of those do-it-yourself visual impairments, um, they could do things like try to read a page out of a book. Uh, try to button a shirt, uh, perhaps try to read um, read a pill bottle or a, or a prescription, um, try to try to just read in general, um, and it, it becomes very, very difficult. Now, to simulate conditions like COPD or emphysema, you could do the following. Uh, one thing you could do is have your students breathe through a straw as long as possible, and that is very, more difficult than it may sound or you could uh, get a compression garment or a binder to enable uh, the wearer to physically experience COPD's typical strenuous labored shallow upper chest breathing only, as well as the subsequent fatigue, 
somewhat ir ir irritability and emotional distress that will result from the sensation of not being able to get enough air. It's terrible. And you can find these type of compression binders online. Um, you could, you, you know, use of Velcro can help accommodate many different sizes. This might be an activity you'd want to save for, for in person, but um, definitely the breathing through a straw exercise is something that can easily be done with students in a remote environment. So now let's take a few, uh, a look at a few soft skill ideas for remote learning. Now, if you're able to put together scenarios to post, you could help uh, walk students through a low fidelity skin assessment uh, situation or scenario. So here's an example of one um, to do uh, a skin assessment that involves pressure injuries. Um, here are images of a skin assessment assignment that I quickly created in a, in a Google Classroom. I started the document with a photo and the name of the patient. And then you can see three different pressure injury um, images that I, I, I posted on here and I said that these were present during the assessment. Now, um, the third part would then be to have um, uh, students walk through the assessment as if they were in the room with this patient, you know, following the procedures. And then um, at the bottom of the, of the um, um, document, I also created an area where uh, students could document their findings. So this in effect becomes the scenario. The student you know, has to do a skin assessment on this patient and following the correct assessment procedures and then document their findings. Now to kick off a patient bathing lesson, um, in, in uh, one of our curricula with our mannequin, we have students read through and answer questions regarding a scenario that's meant to teach empathy and focus specifically on patient-centered care. Now you could use these questions at a, as a discussion or in a discussion forum if possible, or you could use it as thought-provoking thought -provoking, uh, written activity, and it's easy to create your own scenarios as well. So at the link shared at the beginning of our, of our webinar today, um, each of the health science lessons for that accompany uh, Reality Works products has an empathy scenario similar to this. So you literally have free access to as many as two to three dozen uh, ready to use empathy scenarios um, that you could use in a remote teaching environment. So yeah, might be worth a look. Now here's an example of another way to weave soft skills like empathy into a lesson, um, say on respect. You could turn it into a journaling activity about um, why showing respect to your patients is so essential to your job performance. And, and questions like that also always make great writing activities. Now here's a thing I found. It's, um, we know that anytime students can do something like a self-assessment or reflect on their own skills, uh, it's very powerful. And it, it also helps them identify areas of strength and potential areas that they could improve on. So here's an example I found of uh, uh, motivation self-assessment that students could do. You could embed the link, they could have access to it and give it a try, and it would help them be more aware of um, their level of soft skills in that area. So now here's a few other things to consider when teaching in a remote learning environment. Uh, first of all, there are all sorts of combinations that work in order to teach in a remote learning environment. So number one, you could prepare a lecture on a health science topic. Now this could be delivered live or audio taped or videotaped. If you have a simulator, a task trainer, or a model, uh, this could be used in the lecture for demonstration purposes. Now the next level would be to pair that with a presentation slides that you'd prepare. Now again, if you're already um, have hands-on resources that you use in person, you could take photos or shoot videos using these resources and you could embed those in your presentation slides. You can then add activities and integrate them into the presentation uh, or at the end of the presentation on the health science topic. Um, this could provide some assessment too if you wanted. And then you, um, the activity could be a written activity. It could be paired with some sort of experience using the hands-on learning tool. Um, we've shared some examples of this in the webinar of at-home simulation experiences or, or ways to practice some of the nursing skills. And then of course, you could al also add a research component onto this, giving students the opportunity to go deeper into any health science topic. And here's just one example of, uh, you could, if you had a, an anatomical model, you could certainly take a photo or even a video of taking that apart and talking about um, the different um, parts of the anatomy as a, maybe that's a prerequisite knowledge that your students would need to know before learning a procedure. 
Um, and here you see an example where a, a teacher is actually using uh, an ostomy uh, trainer to do an ostomy care video. Um, so there's a lot of different ways if you have um, some of these types of tools already at your disposal as an instructor, but you can't get them in your students' hands right now, you can certainly use them to create some of your own um, uh, videos and things like that. So here's just a few other free additional resources that we wanna um, point out to you that we have available. We have a whole series of free health science career exploration lessons at this link. I believe we've got five, it's like a one week unit on all sorts of different uh, pathways um, where they look into different um, options, they research uh, what uh, typical job duties are, what some of the potential earnings are, the job outlook button, and so forth. Um, we have a blog and it's a very active blog. We are continually, continually um, updating it with new information. We've got a lot of guest speakers that, that contribute to it. Um, so there might be also some good information or even some activities um, that you could do in your classroom that you find in our blog. Um, we are also very um, um, busy on our uh, Facebook, Twitter, things like that. So if you haven't checked that out, you may wish to. And we also do uh, many different free webinars like today. Um, some are health science, but we also do some on soft skills. So we wanted to point those out as well. Um, if you're not able to attend live, we record everything and we archive them and they're available on our website after the, the webinar date. So uh, we've got dozens of health science topics already in our archived uh, webinar portion of our website. We also have uh, many uh, soft skill ones as well. So we've talked, uh, talked to you for about a half an hour now, tried to throw out a lot of free information and ideas that you might find helpful. But um, at this point, we would really like to open it up for questions. So I'm going to turn it back over to Emily as she's been monitoring the chat box throughout the, the webinar and um, she'll now be addressing any of the questions. I haven't seen any questions come through yet. I'll give it a couple more minutes and then um, maybe we'll have a couple more. I know a lot of teachers are finding themselves back in the, the classroom um, this week, especially. We're, we're seeing more of that than ever. So uh, I'm not surprised if we have a lot of our, our teachers trying to multitask um, yes. watching webinars and teaching at the same time. So. Um, however, if there are no questions, Em, um, I'd like, really like to share or thank everybody for sharing the last half hour with us today. Um, I, we hope you find some of these, these things useful and we'd encourage you to uh, be watching for uh, more additional health science webinars. We do them uh, monthly, so, so keep watching for future ones.